Good day brothers and sisters, friends. My name is Deacon Jean Paul Henry and for today's devotion I would like to take a look at a scripture coming from the Acts of the Apostles chapter 9 verses 1 to 20. In this particular scripture it speaks of the very familiar story of the conversion of Paul of of Saul of Tarsus, sorry, a dramatic conversion that tells of a persecutor of Christians and all who believed in Jesus Christ, to a man that became a propagator of the good news of Jesus and joined in the campaign of proclaiming the gospel. It could even be said that he is the chief he became the chief advocate of the gospel of Christ. Now here we see a man who on his way to imprison and persecute persons who were preaching the gospel with his band of mercenaries, made a complete about turn with respect to his ideals and the value system which he upheld. Paul was chosen by God to do the work that he eventually carried out. God appeared to him, converted him, even blinded him to establish that God was in control, and from then on, in charge of his life. Now while we can talk at length about the amazing conversion of Paul, there is someone in this story who plays a pivotal role that we hardly even notice. That man is Ananias. How many of us could recall offhand who this man was? But Ananias plays an important role in this conversion and dare I say, he's the earthly person responsible for the conversion of Saul to Paul. The Lord had given Ananias, who is described as a disciple, the task of going to meet Saul at the house of Judas and preparing him to receive the Holy Spirit. But as we can imagine, Ananias was afraid because of the repetition that Paul had. He knew the, op- the modus operandi and the intent of him and his followers upon reaching Damascus. God said to him, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. So Ananias obeyed God and went out to find the recently converted Saul. He laid his hands upon him and prayed, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately Saul was healed of his blindness and was baptized. The role Ananias played in this conversion we could describe it as the cost of discipleship. This was a proven wrong for Ananias on his Christian journey. He would have had to leave wherever he was hiding, wherever his safe place was, because people knew Saul was on his way to continue what he had started in Jerusalem. So they would have been hiding and preparing themselves for his arrival. But as a follower of Christ, he had to be obedient. He had to pay his cost of discipleship. As Christians, we will all at some point be called upon to do the same. Some of us have probably already done it. Some of us may be doing it currently. And some of us will be called upon in the future. But we must accept that this is part of our journey. Everyone will be called upon in their unique way. It may be a great task to be seen by everyone, or it could be one that is very low-key. Saul was called to a monumental task, but Ananias' task was so low-key that it could easily be overlooked. It is not the task that is important, but it is our response when we are called. Ananias also teaches us a valuable lesson. It is not up to us who should determine who God should call and what task they should be called to. 
God took a persecutor of his followers and elevated him to proclaim the gospel. What is he going to call on us to do? Have we seen persons elevated to positions that we do not believe they deserve? It is not our place to judge, and we can't question the works of the Lord. Similarly in society, everyone has a role to play, and no person's role is more important than another's. Have you ever noticed how a new Christian, someone who we will say was saved, such as Paul was, gets excited and so enthusiastic that there are no limits to what he or she is willing to do to go forward and bear witness of their experience and to win others over for Christ? Paul even preached about Jesus Christ in the synagogues. Imagine this man standing before the assembly of Jewish rabbis and their followers to testify to them that the very one he had rejected and crucified. Yes, Paul had been converted and could not contain himself. Previously, he was blind to the truth, but now he could clearly see that Jesus was indeed the Messiah, Son of the Living God. His heart's desire was to explain it to his fellow brethren, so that they may come to know Christ also, in whom we get we have eternal life. But we must also ask ourselves, how ready are we to pay our course of discipleship? When God says to us, this is what you are to do, what will our response be? Today I want to suggest, if not all of us, some of us may soon be encountering some souls. Let us consider that we may be called as Ananias was called, to go and meet a few souls within our society. When we are free of this COVID-19 pandemic, and we begin to go back into our Regularly, regularly scheduled programs. We may realize that conversion has taken place. We may see conversions in our office spaces, conversions in our classrooms, among some of our friends, within our neighborhoods, even amongst some family members. But what will our response be? When the church reopens its doors, we may discover souls of our community are coming, walking through our doors to worship with us and share in our experience to be converted to Paul's. Will we respond as Ananias initially did? Will we willingly open our hearts and our worship spaces and our experiences to these persons? Will we be converted? The current global pandemic is giving us an opportunity to reflect and reevaluate ourselves as Christians. It is important for us to understand two things, what it means to carry the name of Jesus wherever we go and what it means to love whomever we meet. As Christians, we represent Jesus everywhere we go and in everything we do. We learn from the instructions which Ananias received from the Lord just how seriously witnesses of Christ ought to take their assignments. God told Ananias, Go thy way and minister to Saul. Ananias did it because he was a disciple and listened to the Lord. He had his doubts, he had his fears, but the Lord reassured him. And he, Ananias, was diligent and went to the house of Judas and laid his hands on Saul. St. Paul learned that he was God's chosen instrument. What this means is that God has set aside this man for special service. You and I may be told, go thy way. We may be sent when and where someone needs us. So today I pray that we will always be willing to be diligent like Ananias was, 
because who knows what the Lord has in store for us and who we are being sent to. Let us be ready for that call and ready to respond. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would come me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith would be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me when my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith would be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the walls wherever you would call me. And take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. My soul will rest in your end. 